Hello everyone, welcome to another video. Um, today we're going to look at um, the Streptococcus species. Um, okay, so the Streptococcus species is seen all over the world and is very common in South Africa. And it's responsible for severe morbidity and mortality. Okay, let's look at the overview of Streptococcus. So Streptococcus is a gram-positive um, microbe. It also grows in pairs or in chains. Um, Streptococcus pneumonia is an example of a streptococci that grows in pairs. Um, and then most of the time, Streptococcus pneumonia also has a capsule, um, which contributes to the virulence factor. Um, they are also facultative anaerobes, which means they prefer to grow in a medium with oxygen, but they can also survive without oxygen. So how do we classify Streptococcus? Um, we classify them in two, ma in two ways. Uh, firstly is the hemolytic group. Um, so in what the hemolytic group they are and also their Lansfield grouping, um, which we look now further. So the hemolysis patterns is when we grow these microbes on blood agar, they can either be non-hemolytic, so no color, or partial hemolytic, which means it's like this greenish tint, or they can be beta hemolytic, which is like this luminance. So this is, okay, let's start here. This is non-hemolytic, no um, any color formation at all. And then this is alpha hemolytic, which is partial hemolysis, this greenish tint, such as um, Streptococcus pneumonia is an example of an alpha hemolytic. And then beta hemolytic is this um, extra luminance. Um, and also interesting enough that most of the pathogenic bacteria are part of the alpha hemolytic or the non-hemolytic groups. Then if you look at the Lansfield grouping, um, um, Streptococcus can be um, classified in Lansfield group, so it can either be group A, B, C, D, F or G. Um, you, you skip group E. Um, so we're going to look at how this is performed in a minute. So how does the Lansfield test work is that what you'll do is you'll take your uh, microorganism, you'll mix it with the solutions in the test kit and you'll stir it very well. Then you'll take in your test kit, there will be like these small bottles. Then you take each of the bottle like bottle A and you'll drip one on the paper at A. Then you do the same with B, C, D, F, and G. And after this is complete, then you'll take your solution with your microorganism and you drip it on each of these ones. And the one where the gluatination occurs, like this clotting, then you know that this microorganism is Lansfield group B or C or whatever the case may be. So yeah, so let's look at the classification of Streptococcus. So the alpha hemolytic Streptococcus will be Streptococcus pneumonia and the virulent streptococci. Um, the, the beta hemolytic um, streptococci will be um, streptococcus pyrogenes, agalactea. Um, yeah, and then also enterococci isn't really a streptococci, but it's very closely related. And also the um, streptococcus um, anginosis the non-beta hemolytic groups, so the alpha hemolytic groups and the non-hemolytic groups, will be grouped in the verdans streptococci. Um, okay, so let's look at the natural habitat. So, um, streptococcus pyogenes, um, the P stands for pharynx, so it's a common, uh, no, no, it's an asymptomatic carriage in the pharynx. So it's not a commensal, but it's asymptomatic. Then streptococcus agalactea, uh, is a commensal of the gut as well as the female genital tract. And then Streptococcus uh, pneumonia is also asymptomatic in the upper respiratory tract. And then the Viridin Streptococci is a commensal of the oropharynx. And then Enterococci is a um, commensal of the big or the large um, intestine. So if you look at the alpha hemolytic coccus, um, Streptococcus, is the first one is Streptococcus pneumonia. Um, so once again, Streptococcus pneumonia are diplococci, which means a grow 2-2. Two, two. 
Um, they are also um, non um, and non non Lansfield grouping, so they don't have any Lansfield receptors or antigens. Um, yeah, they normally occur in chain uh, in pairs, and they also can create a lot of diseases such as bacteremia, meningitis, inoguditis, a lot of diseases that they can cause. Um, and then also let's look at how they are transmitted. They are transmitted through close in-person contact, um, things like nursery homes, um, military camps, prisons, um, informal settlements are, are very are prone to this because it's a very uh, close contact, so um, pneumonia can spread easily. And then also the capsule, the capsule is a big virulence factor, and we'll look at it now further. So let's look at the virulence factors of Streptococcus pneumonia. So the first one is the capsule. The capsule is made of a polysaccharide and the capsule will invade host, will evade host defenses such as phagocytosis. And then also <clears throat> um, it has an enzyme autolysin and what autolysin will do is it will lyse the cell membrane, making it um, um, more permeable and it's also essential for the release of another enzyme called feminolysin. So feminolysin is um, toxic and it will produce a host inflammatory response. Um, and then the next virulence factor is feminococcal um, uh, surface protein A or PSPA. So it's feminococcal protein, uh, surface protein A. And then it's a protective antigen uh, for the microbe and it will um, protect the uh, microbe against the complement system, the host complement system. Then if we look at virulence group A, uh, uh, virulence group septococci, um, they can be a lot of microorganisms but their larger groupings are A, C, um, G and F. Um, it's also again, once again, the um, streptococcus anginosum, the non B hemolytic groups are also grouped in a virulence streptococci. Um, and also, this um, group is a commensal of the gut, the GIT, and also the oral mucosa. And they are generally not seen as great pat pathogenic potential. Then, if we look at enterococci, which is a close resemblance to streptococci, is the lancelot group D. They can be alpha, beta, or non Um, They are normally part of the intestinal flora. They can cause a lot of diseases such as urinary tract infections, endocarditis. But normally the disease originates from the intestinal flora, meaning that enterococci is more of a um, pathogen that will affect people with weak immune systems or compromised immune system systems due to some sort of immune disease or something like that, so they are not really big pathogenic potential. And yeah, um, this is Streptococcus in a nutshell. Thank you for listening to this video. Like and subscribe. Cheers.